Hello and thanks for visiting our website, Rebuilder in a Box. Today we're going to learn how to rebuild the CS alternator. Popular on GM from the mill of 86 through 93. First to take the pulley off, we have a half inch impact 15-16 socket. You can wrap a, a, a rag around the pulley to hold on to it if you want to. I have gloves on so I'm not going to. You see the nut, which factory doesn't install a lock washer. We're going to install a lock washer. The pulley comes off, it's hollow. Then a spacer. Fan. and a spacer underneath the fan. Then you'll see the three Torx head bolts. Remove those. Quarter inch six sided socket works great. If the bolts don't want to come out from rust, corrosion, or whatever, turn the alternator upside down and fill these holes up with rust bus. Also you can tap on with a hammer to help loosen things up a bit. Then we're going to get it apart. Sometimes you might have to take a screwdriver and tap on the top. Then we're going to set the rotor in a vise. Open the jaws up far enough so that the rotor goes down in but the plate sits on it. We're going to apply some sort of rust bust around the shaft area where it contacts the bearing. You can use you can use PB blaster, liquid wrench, uh, preferably not WD-40, but you might actually get that to work for you. Then we're going to get a ordinary two by four, two by three, place it on top of it, and smack it to get the shaft out. So now we have the shaft out of the bearing and there's a spacer that goes next to the rotor. Mark this with a paint stick or put a piece of masking tape on it or label it in some fashion so that you don't get it confused with the outer spacer, which in this case is thicker, but it depends on which exact version that you're working on. Some of the uh, satters and stuff, the inner one or the smaller one may be thicker. Now we're placing the rotor in a vise carefully so that you don't cause any damage to the plastic fan. Some are metal, some are plastic. Um, the reason we're putting this in the vise is we're going to take the rear bearing off and what you use is a quarter inch by six extension and you hold it sideways and then tap it off. Now that we have the rear bearing off, take sandpaper or scotch brite and polish up the two slip ring halves. Now looking at the back half of the alternator, we want to take the internal plastic baffle out and what we have to do is remove the three dowel pins that hold it in. You can see the one there. Just take a center punch and drive that down through. And if you look you'll notice the other one is here. and here. So drive those three pieces out. Then take a screwdriver, a small screwdriver, and get under the edge of this rectifier cover 
and pry it up and out. What we need to do is disconnect the stator leads from the rectifier. The rectifier is back in here and the stator leads coming up. We don't care if we damage the rectifier because we're going to replace the rectifier. But the stator leads, the wires coming up from the windings, we want to maintain as much of those as possible. This one has not been soldered, it's been welded. So we want to remove just the very top of the weld because you can see this split area right here, the weld doesn't go down that far. The weld only goes down to where the screwdriver is right now. So what we're going to do is take a pair of side cuts and cut just the uppermost portion of it off. It's going to require some force, but just take the very top of it off. There you can see they've been removed. And as much of the wire, the, the greatest length of the wire is still maintained. You lost maybe a sixteenth or a thirty-second on the length of this wire, and that's nothing to worry about. Some of them, like this one here, uh, especially if they've been rebuilt before, will be soldered on. And what you want to do is get a two hundred watt soldering gun and heat them up, and then either pry that apart or get a pair of needle nose pliers and pull up on it when you see the solder, solder start to melt. Now we need to get the stator out of the rear plate. Stick your fingers underneath the stator and tap it down. And the baffle pretty much falls right out. We will not be reinstalling this. And the reason is um, Diodes have come a long way since when this was designed in it. The Avalanche diode, when it was first designed, when it came out in the late 80s, was a thin piece of wafer. And they were very, very sensitive. And this created additional airflow to help it last a little longer. It didn't work very well. Uh, the rectifiers that we have today are way more advanced in as far as the way the diodes are manufactured and the amount of heat that they can withstand.